The Log Hansen classification is used to classify ankle fractures based on the mechanism of injury. Structures involved in ankle fractures include the medial malleolus, the tibial plafond, the lateral malleolus, and ligamentous structures such as the talofibular ligaments and the deltoid ligaments. There is also the tibiofibular syndesmosis, sometimes referred to as the inferior tibiofibular joint, which is a fibrous joint formed by the distal tibia and fibula. The distal parts of it may be covered by articular cartilage, and the joint is supported by the interosseous ligament, the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, and the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. There is also the transverse tibiofibular ligament, which is also referred to as the intermalleolar ligament. There is also a part of the distal tibia that protrudes posteriorly, commonly referred to as the posterior malleolus. There are four main categories of fracture morphologies, each of which are described using two descriptors. The first descriptor describes the position of the foot at the time of the traumatic event, which can either be in supination or pronation. The second descriptor describes the direction of the force that is deforming the joint. In each category, each fracture morphology is described in stages, in the order of which the fractures occur, depending on the size of the deforming force. The first category of injuries are supination adduction injuries, indicating that the foot starts off in a supinated position with a lateral adduction force applied to the foot. In the first stage, there is tension in the anterior talofibular ligament, which will pull on the distal fibula, leading to a transverse avulsion fracture that occurs distal to the tibial plafond. As the foot continues to adduct, it will also hit the medial malleolus, causing a vertical push-off fracture. The second category of injuries are supination external rotation injuries, which are by far the most common mechanism of injury. The position of the foot is supination to begin with, followed by external rotation. The external rotation pushes onto the lateral fibula, which causes great tension in the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. This will eventually lead to an injury of the ligament or an avulsion fracture. Note that the avulsion fracture shown here, which is known as a chaput fracture, is just one of a few different morphologies that can present with an anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament injury. There can also be an avulsion fracture of the distal fibula, known as a Wagstaff fracture, or it could be a combination of the two, as well as other patterns not described here. As the foot continues to externally rotate, the distal fibula will also fracture, either in a short oblique or spiral pattern, usually around the level of the tibia plafond. If the deforming force continues to be exerted, there can be an injury to the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament or an avulsion of the posterior malleolus. The mechanism for the fracture of the posterior malleolus is not well understood. It has been suggested that it can be due to an avulsion of the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament or a push-off fracture from the talus rising from underneath. Finally, the deltoid ligament can also be disrupted, or a transverse medial malleolus fracture can also take place. The third category of injuries are pronation abduction injuries, starting with the foot in pronation, followed by an abducting deforming force that is being applied. The deltoid ligament is the first to be strained, causing an injury to the ligament or a transverse avulsion fracture of the medial malleolus. Next, further abduction of the foot will push against the fibula, leading to an anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament injury or evulsion. Then the fibula itself will be fractured in a transverse or comminuted pattern proximal to the tibial plafond. The fourth category of injuries are pronation external rotation injuries, starting with the foot in pronation with a deforming force that leads to external rotation. The first stage involves an injury to the deltoid ligament or a medial malleolus evulsion the second stage involves an injury to the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. The third stage would lead to a high oblique or spiral fracture in the fibula that is proximal to the tibial plafond. And in the fourth stage, there will be an injury to the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament or an avulsion of the posterior malleolus. There are some flaws of the large Hansen classification that should be noted. The first is that this classification relies on the mechanism of injury, which is rarely known in a clinical setting and is often speculated. The second is that studies have shown a low consistency rate in predicting fracture patterns from the deforming injury mechanism, whereas another classification called the AOOTA classification was found to have a higher consistency rate in predicting the fracture patterns. 
One major reason for this is that the original technique used to identify these fracture patterns involved manipulations and the application of forces by hand onto the fixed feet of cadavers, which fails to accurately simulate the in vivo forces experienced by the patient during a real ankle fracture. The third is that there is a poor inter-observer reliability in interpreting this and other classifications. For example, transverse fractures are thought to be a product of pronation patterns of injury and vertical fractures are thought to represent supination injury patterns. However, many medial malleolus fractures are oblique, which is a source of confusion. Originally, the large Hansen classification was created to direct close reduction by reversing the mechanism of injury, which is less relevant nowadays as operator fixation has become more popular.